The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. He pulled off the major upset. We'll have the story just ahead. Several important races were on the ballot here in the bluegrass. Still ahead, a breakdown of the major shakeup in Frankfurt. And several Madison County school buses are now out of commission. We're now tracking down the latest on the search for vandals. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning and welcome in. It's good to have you with us on this Wednesday. It is the day after the election. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. I think that sunshine helps wake everybody yeah, up bit. after a, a long night. <laughs> it is bright and brisk out there. Uh, both. You're exactly right. And, and then we also have some of that uh, smoke that continues in some of the region. So let's check in with Micah, see what's going on. And now those clouds have moved right back overhead. And it's going to keep us pretty cool throughout the day. Northerly winds, clouds, that does not allow us to rise that much. We're there in the mid to upper 40s. We'll actually finish off there in the lower to mid 50s as we approach the afternoon. Pretty cold day in store. It's one of those you'll need a jacket all day long. And so the focus of the forecast is not only today do you need the coats, but you'll need to keep those handy the next several days. Our forecast is pretty chilly. I'm going to show you that weekend coming up in a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you shortly. Well, the votes are counted, and Republican Donald Trump has won the 2016 presidential election. The Republican New York billionaire defeated Democrat Hillary Clinton in several key battleground states. Clinton conceded the presidency to Trump in a phone call that came very early this morning at a stunning end to a campaign that up until Election Day, a lot of polls were showing that she was leading. Uh, she was hoping to become the nation's first female president. It's going to be Donald Trump running the White House. Craig Boswell has the latest from Washington on this historical election. President-elect Donald Trump emerged on stage at his election night headquarters in New York, cheered by crowds of supporters. It is time for us to come together as one united people. The Republican nominee defied expectations Tuesday, racking up crucial victories in the battleground states of Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio, among others. I've not met a single person out there yet who doesn't feel like I do and has the same burden on their heart about what's happening to our country. Earlier, Hillary Clinton called Trump to concede the race. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory, and I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard fought campaign. Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, addressed crowds of supporters gathered at her election night headquarters. You know, and I want every person across the country who supported Hillary to know that your voices and your enthusiasm means so much to her. Despite wins in Virginia, Colorado, and Nevada, the Democratic nominee failed to carry many of the battleground states President Obama won in 2012. Many of those gathered to see a Clinton victory rally left in tears. As the results trickled in, crowds of demonstrators remained outside the White House well into the morning as they anxiously await the end to the bitter presidential contest. House Speaker Paul Ryan, who was critical of Trump's campaign, called to congratulate him on a big night. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. And Hillary Clinton is expected to speak sometime within the next hour. Keep it here on WKYT, and we'll take you live to the CBS News coverage out of New York for that speech as soon as it gets underway. Now, as expected, Trump did well in Kentucky. He won 66% of the vote here in the Commonwealth. Taking a look at the map of the United States, you can see exactly which states helped Trump surpass the 270 electoral votes needed to clinch the presidency. A few states have yet to declare a winner. Well, emotions are running high for some people after the election. Lexington police are investigating after someone damaged a Republican Party office. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning at the GOP office on Southland Drive. Someone threw a brick through the door of the building. Police tell us they took a criminal mischief report, but they say it'll be hard to figure out who damaged the building. It was a big day for many Kentucky politicians as well. For the first time in 95 years, Republicans will now control the Kentucky State House. House. Now here's a look at the new balance of power. The Republicans now have a 64 to 35 seat margin with one race still too close to call. WKYT's Hillary Thornton continues our election coverage this mid-morning. She's at our news desk now with Governor Matt Bevin's reaction to the change up in the state house. Good morning, Hillary. 
Well, good morning. A very happy Governor Matt Bevin just wrapping up an interview here at WKYT. In fact, the governor says he is as happy politically today as he has been in his entire life. Last night, Republicans taking control of the state House of Representatives for the first time in nearly a century, joining the already Republican-controlled state Senate. Also big news here in the Commonwealth, longtime House Speaker Greg Stumbo losing his reelection bid. Governor Bevin had this to say to Bill Bryant during a taping of Newsmakers that just wrapped up a few minutes ago. The thing that I would hope people understand, this isn't just that Republicans are in charge, the people are in charge. The people of Kentucky, the values we represent, our work ethic, our Judeo-Christian principles, the very motivations that we have, the desire to be gainfully employed and to have opportunity, that's what's in charge. The people of Kentucky have spoken and they voted their values, not their party, and there's a new day dawning in Kentucky. Now, while Greg Stumbo losing his seat came as a big surprise to many here in Kentucky, Governor Bevin says he saw that result coming for some time. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. And that full interview will be airing on Kentucky Newsmakers on Sunday morning. Well, U.S. Senator Rand Paul's prediction that the election night would be a big one for Kentucky Republicans came true. We'll head back to Washington for a second. He'll head back to Washington for a second term in the Senate, where he says he'll continue to focus on small government. Paul easily defeated Democratic challenger Jim Gray, 57 to 43 percent. Gray says he looks forward to getting back to work as Lexington's mayor. Republicans also won the 6th District Congressional race. That district includes the Lexington, Central Kentucky area. Incumbent Andy Barr had no problem defeating first-time Democratic challenger Nancy Jo Kemper. Barr pulled in 61% of the vote. In his victory speech, Congressman Barr talked about the need to reduce government spending and to improve health care. Now we're still tracking a race in Madison County that's still too close to call. Incumbent Democratic State Representative Rita Smart is trailing Republican Wesley Morgan by just 76 votes. The race still has not been called. It's very likely a re-canvas could be ordered for this race. And in State House District 62 in Scott County in the Georgetown area, incumbent Democrat Chuck Tackett lost to Republican Philip Pratt. Tackett just defeated Pratt earlier this year in March in a special election, but on election night, voters sided with Pratt. He wins the district with 58 percent of the vote. Now, our campaign 2016 coverage continues online right now on W. KYT.com, you'll find a complete list of the results, interactive maps, reaction, and a breakdown of the state races there on our website. All right, want to switch gears now to some other news. A golden alert for a missing elderly man out of Fayette County has been canceled this morning. Lexington police say Stephen Rapchak was found and he is safe. He was found about 9 a.m. in the Hamburg area. He was reported missing from his home on Easton Road around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Several Madison County school buses are out of service this morning. Richmond police say they were targeted by vandals. Now, this is what the buses look like this morning. You can see someone sprayed the letters KKK on the sides. They also smashed dozens of windows. Police estimate the vandals caused around $10,000 in damage. A smoke inhalation advisory is in effect for several eastern Kentucky counties this morning who are battling those wildfires. Now, just by looking at this footage, you can see why the advisory was issued. State health officials say tests show unhealthy air in parts of Bell, Harlan, and Rock Castle counties. At last check, 33 wildfires are still burning in eastern Kentucky this morning. The longtime bugler out at Keeneland is going to be remembered today. George Bucky Sally died this week. His wife says he died from natural causes. The Lexington native retired from the historic track in 2013 after starting there in the early 1960s. His family says Sally loved Keeneland, the horses and the people, especially the kids. Visitation for Bucky is today at 4 at Johnson's Funeral Home. His funeral is tomorrow at Georgetown First United Methodist Church. Bucky Sally was 87 years old. All those years, it was like a living postcard. Oh, absolutely. You know, a lot of great him. memories when people just thought of him <laughs> when they thought of Keeneland. Always hitting those notes. Well, keep it right here this mid-morning. Back in a moment, still ahead, new technology is keeping a sick student from missing classes. We're going to take a closer look at the robot making it happen.
And we have the 40s outside right now. We actually end off in the low to mid 50s. It's going to be a chilly day all day long. And then we look towards your weekend forecast, a possible freeze in there. I'm going to show you that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're in the upper 40s at this moment. We'll finish off in the lower 50s, and that's really not far off from where we are right now. So what you feel outside is basically what you're going to be feeling later on this afternoon. Low to mid 50s expected. You got the clouds around. It's not going to be full-blown sunshine. You could get a peak or two here or there, but for the most part, we are looking like we're going to stay with cloudy skies the rest of the day. 51 degrees for an afternoon high. And so once we go throughout the evening and off into the night, that's when some really cool air settles on in. We'll actually get rid of a lot of the cloud cover and that allow our temperature to drop right there in the mid 30s, which will give way to a frost advisory overnight. So that's tonight into tomorrow morning. Watch out for that frost advisory across the region. And that's for virtually every location outside. So if you're watching right now, you're going to be dealing with that frost advisory. Now, once we travel off and through the next few days, those temperatures continue to stay pretty low. I mean, we'll be there in the 50s for the most part. Can't re roll out a 60 degree reading tomorrow. And then more cool air slides on in here there for the weekend. It's really Friday evening off into the overnight hours. That's when the coldest air drives on in here. We'll be right there in the upper 40s to lower 50s. It's a pretty chilly Saturday in store. That is our second front. It's going to be rolling on through here that will give us the opportunity to see those temperatures drop to close to freezing. So we could see some freezing temperatures there for the weekend. So here's the rundown. 51 degrees for today. We're at 60 degrees for tomorrow. And then we head off toward Veterans Day. We're talking mid to upper 50s. And so the next three days don't look all that bad, but they're still going to be on the cooler side of things. Actually, 60 is right around average. Then we hit Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, they, I give a 10% chance of rain, but really just can't rule out a sprinkle or two. 49 degrees for a high. That means upper 40s to lower 50s, which means the overnight lows will be there in the 30s. So this could mean that we see our first potential freeze there for the weekend. We'll see how it turns out. We're pretty confident it's going to be cold both of those days. There's no doubt about that. But how low do these temperatures go? That's really what we're watching out for. If you have any plans going off towards your weekend, you are going to have to bundle up. I will tell you this on Saturday, though. About three days ago, it was reading down in the low to mid 40s, and now you can see 49 degrees. So it's getting warmer each and every model run. We're about four days out, so we still have plenty of time to uh, see how this is going to work out. But nonetheless, we're confident it's cold. Mm -hmm. But we're just, where does it go, temperature-wise? We'll see. Interesting. Very, <laughs> Very interesting. Still Absolutely. a good time to be finding your ice scraper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I think so. Right. Make sure it's, it's ready. Yeah, thank well, you. when your child is sick, the normal rule is to keep them home from school and let them rest. Uh, but a Wisconsin student is using some new technology to take his place. Grady Loper is a fourth grader who has a rare condition. It keeps him home from school a lot. So instead of missing out on class, he remotely controls a robot from his laptop. It has a microphone and camera, allowing Grady to be in class without risking infection. He can also interact with his teacher and classmates as well. All right, a triumph of technology. Yeah, there. what a great thing. Yeah. Puts him right there. Well, the Rolling Stones have a new release, and Phil Collins makes a big announcement. Suzanne Marquez has today's Eye on Entertainment from Los Angeles. There's something in the air for Phil Collins. The singer announced his biggest ever solo concert at a British music festival just weeks after changing his mind about retiring. Collins will perform June 30th at British Summertime Hyde Park, joining the band Green Day as one of the headliners. The Rolling Stones are singing the blues. Go away, you left me. The band just released the first video from its new blues cover album, Hate to See You Go, originally by Little Walters. The 12-track album called Blue and Lonesome will be available on December 2nd. It's the group's first studio album in a decade. And Naomi Watts stars as a child psychologist in the new thriller Shut In. The film revolves around a stepson who's hiding secrets and the patients Watts' character is trying to protect. There are some very psychological things that go on that, um, and, and you know, you, you're played with as an audience member. Shut in opens nationwide this Friday. That's your Ion Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And we hope you'll keep it here on Mid Morning on WKYT. The homeless are getting the help they need from some caring folks over in Jessamine County. Find out more next on WKYT.
Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $236 million, and Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $63 million. And welcome back. It's mid-morning here on WKYT. Something important to tell you about. Those who need it most are getting help in one Kentucky county. The Jessamine County Homeless Coalition is offering meals, shelter, laundry, and more. To talk more about it, we're joined by Johnny Templin, Executive Director of the Jessamine County Homeless Coalition. Welcome. Glad to have you in here today. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Johnny, it's interesting you were sharing some numbers with us. It's just amazing even the number of children who are homeless in Jessamine County. Yeah, it's a new number. The, the homeless children in Jessamine County is uh, right at about 150 school, uh, school age children right now. now. They're sleeping on, it's necessarily outside, it's couch surfing and stuff like that, but 150 school children are possibly a, an argument away from being out on the street. Nowhere yeah. to really call home. Correct. Yeah. Uh, With this homeless coalition, what are you able to do now to help? When, when we open uh, next week, we'll, not only will we have a two-part uh, shelter program, an emergency stay facility and a short-term hybrid transitional where we engage them in life skill classes to try to re-enable them to get back out. But everything else besides our beds are community facing. So somebody can literally come in there three times a day and show us an ID and sign in and eat a meal with us. They can do a lot. We got three hours a night that the laundry facility is open to the public. Uh, we can come in. They can come in and do their job searches. Uh, even just sign up to take a shower because uh, statistics show out of about the 35 chronic homeless people in Jasmine County, the ones that are sleeping outside, about seven of them will not stay in the facility. So we we set it up to where we can still offer a love and hand to them whether they want to listen to the shelter rules and get to stay in a bed or not. You're hoping you get them to a better place so that they can uh, they can uh, move on uh, hopefully to employment or a better situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're teaming up with a lot of community partners to make it happen both on the jobs base and, and moving them forward in it. But tell us about the night at the shelter. Okay, it's kind of our uh, uh, community open house uh, preview if you will and what we've got going on is uh, it's set up over over four different start times uh, so we can stagger a, a, then get a decent amount of people in there and well, we've got a cater meal we're going to have some music in there we'll have a presentation about the ministry and just uh, a little section where we're talking about other ways that the community can engage in order to maximize the number of people we're starting it at five, stagger times at five o'clock six o'clock seven and eight o'clock Okay, that will be coming up on Saturday, and uh, it is at the Jessamine County Homeless uh, Coalition facility. Tickets are $25, uh, your opportunity to learn about what's being done in the community. Thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Good, good work luck you're with doing. that, sir. Thank you for having me. We'll keep it right here this mid-morning. going to check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up here in the middle of the week on WKYT. Well, it's a side dish that goes along with almost any meal. Get ready to write this one down. It looks good. Today in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, it's creamy onion pie. If you're always looking for a way to stop crying when cutting an onion, you're not alone. Here in the Test Kitchen, we've tried everything from wearing a snorkel and mask to help prevent those irritating vapors from getting into our eyes to burning a candle next to the cutting board so those nasty gases get attracted to the flame instead of our eyes. But from all our chopping and slicing experience, we've learned the best way to reduce those tears is to make sure you have a sharp knife, which reduces the amount of gases that are released. So now you know how to reduce those tears, let me show you an onion recipe that'll bring you tears of joy. All we do is place some sautéed onions in a par -bake pie crust. and top it off with a mixture we made by combining some eggs, sour cream, and a few spices. And when we bake this off for about 45 minutes, we end up with the creamiest, most flavor-packed onion creation you've ever tasted. And whether you serve it as a side dish or as the star of a brunch, you're gonna love it. I do hope you'll go online and get a recipe for our creamy onion pie so you can show how onions can bring tears of joy rather than making you a weepy mess. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a tearless way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. I don't, I, 
I mean, onion pie, the, the sound of it, oh, but I bet it's not. good. Yes, I know? bet it would be wonderful. You'd love it if you had some. You ought to try this one. I, say, I don't think there's ever a fail there in the no. Mr. Food Test Kitchen. It's if all Barb good. made it, we would try it. That's true. Okay, you all right. Well, I guess that's a deal. Yeah, you have right. to make something to go with it, though, okay? <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right, let's look at the weather real quick. Seven-day forecast. Here's the breakdown. The next several days... We are not seeing a good chance of rain at all. The next best chance of rain is going to be Saturday. This is bad news because we're still having some of those wildfires down toward the south and southeast. The good news with this front that's just rolled through is, is changing those winds around. Now, if you remember the past few days, we've had some smoke here in Lexington, surrounding areas, and that's because the winds have been coming in from the south. They grab that smoke and travels northbound. Now it's switched out in the north, and yes, we'll get some cooler air with that. You can see in the lower 50s later on this afternoon. You better grab a coat before you take off. You'll need it all day. I think that's good. But it I, takes the smoke yeah. out uh, with it, and that takes yeah, it down to good. Tennessee. Yeah. So good more riddance. likely, yeah, but putting yeah. it off toward Tennessee, not so much. All right. <laughs> Hillary Clinton will be giving a concession speech in the next few minutes. CBS News will be carrying that. We'll have that here on WKYT. And, of course, we'll have the latest on President-elect Donald Trump and the reaction from Hillary Clinton on a report on WKYT News at noon. On this day after, there's a lot to digest, there but is. we're here for you. Make it a great day, everybody.